Hey all, in this lesson you'll learn about recursion. First, we'll talk about what recursion is. Second, we'll go through the logical steps of a recursive algorithm. Finally, we'll see what happens when we execute the recursive algorithm. Recursion is a programming technique where an algorithm breaks down the problem into a smaller piece and calls the same method again to solve that smaller piece. Depending on your programming language, you may use the term function or procedure instead of method. For this lesson, I'm going to use the term method. When a recursive method calls itself, it's called a recursive case. When it finishes up without calling itself, it's called a base case. Every recursive method must eventually hit a base case, otherwise it will keep going until it runs out of memory. Before we jump into an example of recursion, Let's look at a mathematical algorithm to calculate factorials. If you don't remember factorials, hang in there for 60 seconds and I guarantee you'll be good. So what's a factorial? A factorial is the product of a positive integer multiplied by all positive integers below it. For example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 120. Both 0 factorial and 1 factorial are equal to 1. This will be important later. In math class, you learn to calculate factorials iteratively. Let's go back and look at 5 factorial. We start with the 5 and keep multiplying it by n minus 1 until we get to 1. If you stop and think, you could see how you could program this algorithm iteratively using a loop. Now here's where it gets interesting we're going to use a recursive technique to solve a factorial. We saw that the iterative way to calculate 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But we could also say that 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial. After all, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we can say 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 factorial. We can keep this up until we hit 1 factorial, and we know that 1 factorial equals 1. In this algorithm, 1 factorial is our base case because it provides a solution without calling our factorial algorithm again. Let's write this out in pseudocode. I've got the method factalgo that takes in a parameter n. If n is 0 or 1, then we hit the base case and just return 1. If n is greater than 1, we multiply n times the factorial of n minus 1. We calculate the factorial of n minus 1 by calling factalgo again. Now we're going to trace through the pseudocode, and I'm going to play the part of the factalgo method. I'm the first call of factalgo. Let's see what they gave me for n. n is 3, so we're going to solve for 3 factorial. Let's look at the pseudocode. 3 isn't equal to 0, and it isn't equal to 1, so I can move on. However, 3 is greater than 1, so I'll execute the indented line of code. I'm going to multiply 3 times whatever 2 factorial is. To figure out 2 factorial, I'll call factalgo again. Let's see what they gave me for n. n equals 2. Well, 2 isn't equal to 0 and isn't equal to 1, so I can move on. However, 2 is greater than 1, so I'll execute the indented line of code. I'm going to multiply 2 times whatever 1 factorial is. To figure out 1 factorial, I'll call factalgo again. Let's see what they gave me for n. n is 1. Well, 1 isn't equal to 0, but it is equal to 1, so I'm going to execute the indented line of code. I've reached the base case, so I'll just return 1. Now I know that 1 factorial is 1, so I can multiply it by my n, which is 2. 2 times 1 is 2, so I'm going to return 2. Now I know that 2 factorial is 2, so I can multiply it by my n, which is 3. 3 times 2 is 6, so 
So I'll return the final answer of 3 factorial, which is 6. So that's how a computer executes a recursive program. Let's go back and look at the pseudocode again. Notice that each time we make a recursive call, it's getting closer to the base case. It's crucial to write recursive algorithms this way, because otherwise you'll keep making recursive calls until you eventually run out of space and memory and get a stack overflow. Actually, even if you write a recursive algorithm correctly, you can still run out of memory. When we calculated 3 factorial, that resulted in three calls to our method factalgo. We were in no danger of running out of memory there. But instead, imagine if you tried 100,000 factorial you'd need 100,000 calls to fact algo. You'd run out of space on the stack long before you hit the base case. This is one reason that some types of problems aren't well suited to recursion. Now let's look at the program, but instead of pseudocode, it's written in Java. Or JavaScript. or Python. In the Java, JavaScript, and Python examples, we followed the same recursive algorithm, but with language-specific syntax. Now, you never have to write an algorithm recursively, because any recursive algorithm can also be written iteratively. But sometimes, the recursion solution is more elegant. Calculating factorials is a classic example of that. Now to learn even more about recursion, join me in the next video. But before you go, tell me in the comments, what programming language are you currently learning?